All right, so next thing we're going to look at is the time value of money equations. You might have seen these in your Algebra 1 slash Algebra 2 classes. They're pretty popular problems. So we're going to have some variables here. We're going to let V equal the future value of money. We're going to let P equal the present value of money. R is going to be our real interest rate. Remember, our real interest rate is equal to the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. And what do you want to express it as a decimal? N is equal to the number of years, and K is equal to the number of times interest is credited per year. So there's going to be two formulas here. Our simple interest formula is going to be the future value of money, V, is equal to 1 plus the real interest rate to the N number of years times the present value of money. And you're going to have your compound interest formula, which is the future value of money is equal to 1 plus the real interest rate over the number of times interest is credited per year to the number of years times the number of times interest is credited per year times the present value of money. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some example problems here. All right, time value of money illustrated. Let's assume that inflation is expected to be 3% and that the nominal interest rate on a simple interest savings is 1%. We're going to calculate that future value of money after one year. So the first step is to go ahead and just calculate that real interest rate. So that real interest rate is equal to the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. Um, we can see that the nominal rate is equal to 1 and inflation is 3%. So we have 1% minus 3%, which is negative 2%, expressed as a decimal, would be negative 0 0.02. Next step is to go ahead and use the simple interest formula to calculate that future value of $1. So simple interest formula is V is equal to 1 plus R to the N times P. Now we just have to plug in some numbers, use our calculator, and figure out uh, that future value of money. So if 1 plus our real interest rate, remember, was negative uh, 0 0.02 to the 1 year times $1. 98 cents times a dollar is 98 cents. So notice here that inflation, because the inflation rate was greater than your nominal interest rate, that the, um, the future value of that dollar actually declined. Inflation took away the value of that dollar. All right, let's look at another one here with the compound interest formula. So we're gonna assume that annual inflation is, is expected to be 2.5%. The annual nominal interest rate on a 10-year certificate of deposit is 5%, compounded monthly. We're gonna calculate the future value of $1,000 after 10 years. So our first step is to calculate that real interest rate. Remember, that's the real interest rate is equal to the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. So we have um, a nominal interest rate of 5%. Our inflation is 2.5%. 5 minus 2.5 is 2.5%. As expressed as a decimal, is 0 0.025. And then our next step is to use that compound interest formula to calculate the future value of $1,000. So remember, our compound interest formula is V is equal to 1 plus R over K to the NK times P. Now we just plug in those variables and calculate. So V is equal to be going to be equal to 1 plus, remember our real interest rate is 0 0.025 over, you have uh, the interest is compounded monthly, so 12 times a year, so divided by 12, to the 10 years times compounded 12 times per year times $1,000. So our future value of money is going to be $1,283.69. So that will be the future value of that $1,000 after 10 years.
All right, so let's go ahead and relate money to gross domestic product. So there's a very famous uh, American economist, his name is Irving Fisher, and he postulated something. He said that nominal gross domestic product is equal to the money supply times money's velocity. So when we're talking about money's velocity, we're talking about how often money changes hands, the rate at which money is exchanged as we go from one transaction to another. You could also look at it as the number of times money is used to purchase goods in gross domestic product. So let's take a look at this, what's called monetary equation of exchange. So it looks like this, it says MV is equal to PQ, which is also going to be equal to nominal gross domestic product. So what does MV equals PQ, what, are, what do those variables mean? So M is going to be equal to the money supply, either M1 or M2. Generally, um, M2 is going to be used. M2 is the more commonly used measure of the money supply by economists. V is equal to money's velocity, either M1 or M2. P is equal to the price level, same thing as the PL on the ADAS. And Q is equal to real GDP, and that's sometimes labeled the Y on the ADAS diagram. And remember that P times Q is the same thing as nominal GDP. So MV is equal to PQ, which is equal to nominal gross domestic product. So using this equation, there's another famous American economist, his name is Milton Friedman, and he came up with this idea called monetarism. And this was the idea that by increasing the money supply year after year, you could consistently increase nominal gross domestic product year after year after year. All right, so let's do a little example here with the monetary equation of exchange. So we've got MV is equal to PQ, money supply times the velocity is equal to the price level times real gross domestic product. So let's say our M1 is 2 trillion. Let's say the velocity of M1 is equal to 7. So the money in M1 is going to purchase goods in gross domestic product seven times a year. And then, therefore, PQ is going to be equal to $14 trillion, or nominal gross domestic product is going to be equal to $14 trillion, because you have M1 times, which is $2 trillion, V is 7, multiply those, you get $14 trillion. Now, if you looked at this on your ADA, ADAS diagram, you would have this box right here because it is the price level times output. All right, so let's do the assessment. So for number one, we're going to compare and contrast M1 and M2. For number two, we're going to assume that inflation um, is expected to be 2%, but that the nominal interest rate on simple uh, interest savings is 10%. We're going to calculate the future value of $1 after one year. Okay, um, so with that one right there, we're going to go ahead and just use that simple interest formula.
All right, you can pause this if you want. Otherwise, we're moving on. And so for the summary, in a paragraph, we're going to describe what we learned today. And I will see you guys tomorrow.